So every time you say no to your red wine, you're saying yes to the health and the life that you want. I always say, Hello, hello, Hill Squad. Hope you guys had a great 4th of July. Glad to be back with you today. We'll start with our quote of the day. It's one of my favorite quotes ever, by the way. Let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food. That is from Hippocrates. Friends, I don't know why we have strayed from that, but we have. Hill Squad, it is going to be a great day today. You know why? Because when you know better, you get better. And that's what we're going to do here today. So we are going to chat about um, a new health program that I'm really excited about. But first, if you haven't left us a review, please do. Thank you so much to everyone who has. They light us up. They keep us going. We will put a link in the summary of this episode to make it super easy. You just click on it. Tell us how it's been going for you. Anything that's changed, shifted in your life what you've loved, a guest you've loved, any of it um, would be great. Don't forget, we have our merch at mariamenunos.com. You can get a t-shirt or a mug or something to keep reminding you that you are on this healing journey. Also, as you know, Macy's is a big supporter of the show, and we're so grateful to them. I do have my link, macy's.com backslash heal squad with all of my top picks from the site currently. And so with summer upon us, I have some new fashion that I've put up there. There's all kinds of stuff for your home and kitchen and gift ideas. So head on over there for anything that's coming up. <clears throat> we get credit for anything that you buy through that link. So even if you say, Maria, I didn't have what I wanted there. Um, I'm sorry that I didn't read your mind at the moment, but I will get there, I'm sure. Just purchase through that link and it gives us a credit and it helps us keep the lights on here. So thank you for that. So I'm going to bring in an OG heel squatter today. Her name is Ann Sleeman. Now, Ann happens to be a friend of Kevin's from college. Woohoo, St. Anselm's in Manchester, New Hampshire. And Anne has been with Heel Squad forever. And you were a part of our first big team meeting we had in Connecticut a few years ago. Um, and she has been helping Natasha and Kevin as of late on the show, um, jumping in and just being awesome. And we've had so many Heel Squatters in the past that have jumped in and helped so much. And we're so grateful to everybody. Uh, shout out to Stephanie and so many. But Anne has a new role that I have placed upon her. <laughs> so I'll tell you, friends, on this show, we get um, a lot of solicitations for ads. And I want you guys to know that I really do choose very, very carefully what I'm endorsing here and what the show is endorsing. And so I say no to a lot of things. Noom was a new one that came up and... I looked into it. It looked really interesting because of the psychology based approach that they take to weight management. And I found that to be hugely successful in my journey, um, losing 40 pounds. I did it over the course of a year. This was 20 plus years ago. And it connected with me because I was like, okay, this is exactly kind of what I did. And they just put it into a program for people. I wrote a book. Um, but you know, these programs make it so easy. So I said, Anne, would you be willing to try this out and let us know honestly and genuinely your feedback on it? And I, I agree to all of this because like I said, it was something that looked really great for me and great to me. Um, it made a lot of sense to me and the seal of the deal was that I had other friends who I found out were obsessed with it. And so before I even go to you, Anne, I'm going to tell you what one of my friends, I texted and I was like, hey, tell me about a little bit deeper about what your experience was like with Noom, because I know that you loved it, but I don't know exactly what you loved about it. And he was like, huge results. I'm a big fan. It worked for me. I went from 195 194 pounds to now 169, also stopped drinking. Um, and let's see now he is in the Noom maintenance program because he reached his goal weight. 
um, also had a health situation in the midst of all of this where because he lost the weight, his doctor in a general physical felt a tumor that would never have been found if they didn't do, you know, if he hadn't lost the weight probably. Anyhow, because it was very rare and unusual that a, a primary care physician would feel that. Anyway, um, he says, if you, it works if you follow it. It teaches you about caloric density and encourages you to have a larger percentage of lower caloric dense foods each day. It teaches you a lot about how it all works and keeps you mindful of how much food you're eating all day because you're logging your meals. That was a really big thing for me when I first embarked on my weight loss journey. I wrote everything I ate down for a week because, you know, you think you're not eating a lot and then you and you're not doing so bad. But when you write it all down, you're like, oh, OK. When I was done for a week, I go, carbs are my problem. So he says, you know, it works because you log all your meals and then you see what you have room for and what you don't. Awareness is a big component. It also teaches psychology around eating and hormones. But the cool thing is nothing's off limits. It's like a big game of suitcase. You know your allotment for the day and you decide how you're going to stay in it. So um, he's like, so I remember if I knew I wanted to have a drink that night, I wasn't going to waste high caloric dense calories on something like olive oil on my salad. So it's like swaps. You learn the nuance and the tricks. I got the hacks. The great thing about Noom is that it's not extreme. It's science-based and it works and it's sustainable in capital letters for the long term, which is why I also love this program because I'm like, sustainability is hard. Anyone can do any of these, get skinny fast, you know, techniques and lose some weight. It's just, you're not changing the behavior. You're not changing the habit. So it's not going to last. That's why my weight loss was able to last. And that's why with Noom, it's sustainable for the long term. He also said you can go to any restaurant and know what to eat and what not to eat. It loves whole grain, whole wheat. So you can have a whole wheat English muffin, no problem. So you can get your bread fix. It loves potatoes. Um, and I said, um, is it overwhelming to learn? And he said, no, not at all. It's fun. Just engage with the app, do the lessons and know the three categories of foods, green, yellow, and orange. Green is the lowest caloric density and the highest is orange. You get used to it really quick. And so, um, I just thought it's so cool to hear all like kind of that behind the scenes of somebody. Cause you know, sometimes these things can be overwhelming. So, Anne, tell me what your experience has been like so far. Okay, first of all, I love everything that your friend shared there, and some of it has already started to resonate with me. Um, but interesting, when you first asked me, Maria, to, um, you know, be part of this and to track everything. Because I, I know you're going to be honest. I, I, I'm going to be honest. I mean, that's, you know, Irish Catholic, man. That's the only way I know how to roll. So I was a little bit apprehensive because I'm not a good note taker. I've never been a note taker. I, I, I'm not one to write stuff down. I just try to commit it to memory. And therein perhaps is where part of my issue was. Um, because I went into this and I'm like, I eat pretty well. You know, I eat this many veggies. I do pretty decent. I don't really have a sweet tooth. Um, I have a bread tooth. I have come <laughs> to realize, um, you know, it's not the ice cream or the cookies, but it's the baguettes and the butter. So um, I decided, you know, after we got off the phone that night, I'm like, all right, if I'm going to say I'm going to do it, I'm going to 100 percent all in. Um, I'm going to commit to it. So since then, I've logged every single meal. I've weighed myself every single morning. I have. It's like being on a long car ride. I have felt every emotion. There are moments when my favorite song is playing and I'm like, yes, I love being on this road. And there are other times when I feel like I'm stuck in traffic <laughs> and I want to just honk the horn, flip the person off in front of me and start crying. Um, so let's talk about like one of the best things is it does bring about awareness. So the first couple of days that I was doing it, I'm like, I'm just going to log what I do and not really get wrapped into changes. I'm just going to see where I'm at, Smart. kind of bent, bent market, and be like, what is my normal day? I don't really know. And um, so like your friend touched upon, there's the caloric density foods. And um, you get a little quiz in the app. And as an app developer myself, I do like the app, but we can get to that uh, down the road. 
So my biggest shocker with the high caloric density foods was my organic protein shake. Here was something I always thought, like, I'm making a good choice for myself because I'm having a protein shake. It's not even food, for God's sakes. <laughs> That's in the orange. I'm like, are you kidding me right now? I'm like, so one of the cool things about uh, the app also is you get a coach. And if I'm all over the board here, just bring me back. You get a coach. So my coach's name is Kim, and she's awesome. So I messaged Kim, and I'm like, Kim, what the heck? My organic, not cheap protein shake is <laughs> orange. If I'm going orange, dude, I want to have, and then pizza is yellow. I'm like, all right, I totally have had such a distorted view and path and methodology for balanced choices. And I've run the gamut. I've been paleo. I've been vegetarian. I've counted macros. I've done all that stuff. So all those other things, it's a game, it's mental, it's all this. And you're like, dude, I can't have a piece of bread or I can't have bacon, which for anybody who has been vegetarian and isn't really, don't do bacon, it's the gateway meat back. But um, <laughs> all those things always made me feel lack or embarrassed because I'd be out with my you know, in shape friends or my skinny friends, and they'd be having a, whatever they were having that wasn't in the in the, you know, uh, system of the the week. So this, so I started. I think it was June seventeenth. Um, with is it Noom? Is that how I pronounce Noom. it? Sorry, is it Noom? Sorry, with Noom, it's like broom. So I should have known that with Noom. And like, and to double down on what your friend said, it's more like, I can have whatever I want. I just can't have everything I want every day. And all in the same so, day. Yeah. And all in the same day. Like, and um, yeah, so it's been very eye-opening. Like the awareness of it for me was, what was eye-opening. I definitely thought I was eating more green food than I was. <laughs> So now I'm like, wait, I guess I didn't have anything green for breakfast because um, of the protein shake and then eggs. So now I'm like, okay, oatmeal counts as green. I think I'll have oatmeal instead of eggs or instead of that protein shake. So I'm starting to make those choices in and out. And I wanted to just, if I may, talk real quickly about the drinking portion of the program. Mm -hmm. Um because your friend mentioned it, that he he completely stopped. And that was very, you know, again, culture. Yeah. You know, oh, a glass of red wine is heart healthy and it's good for you. But you're like, okay, but there's a lot of calories in, in a glass of Cabernet. So do I want to have that? And I, I now have Fresco, which might be a different... Uh, health choice that I need to change down the road. But instead of having that glass of wine, mostly every night, which I know isn't a good choice, but that was the choices I was making. So true confessions here. Um, I'm like, you know what? I think I'm going to have a fresco because I don't want to have those red calories. So that's where I'm at a couple weeks in and I'm really excited. Um, and I've been doing the tracking and uh, I haven't dipped into the community too much yet. Um, sharing isn't always something that comes natural for me. I would rather talk about your journey and what your struggles are than You're my You're doing own. so great. <laughs> this is so out of my comfort zone to do this. Maybe it's- You're I doing feel... great. Thanks. So- um... I think I'm telling you right now, I'm so impressed that you, you but it, that's why I also knew you were the right one to do this in our lives because sometimes these things come up and if it's not something that I can do I'm like who on the team wants to try this because I want an authentic experience to talk about because I know this program's amazing yeah. and and so I think this is going to change your life and I think you embracing the note-taking a lot of times I see 
the very thing you run from is a thing you need to run to. So I hate writing, so I have to write more. Um, and so for you taking those notes, maybe you weren't taking those notes because you didn't want to know. Now you're being forced to know. And that was so successful in my weight loss journey is writing everything down. It kept me accountable every day. Yes, it's a pain in the ass, but every day I would say, okay, today I you know, ate half the bagel instead of the full bagel. And then I would just cut down and cut down. And I was replacing and eating more ca uh, low calorie dense foods. I was switching the bad stuff over or the not as healthy stuff to more salad, more vegetables, eating more greens, and you get addicted to the highs of success. So every time you say no to your red wine, you're saying yes to the health and the life that you want. I always say, in those tough moments, think about what you want more than that glass of wine. And you hit it on the head with the culture. Our culture is about going out to eat, having all the apps, having the drinks, cocktails, this and that. When I got diagnosed with diabetes, everything changed for me. And I had to make those different choices because I would probably, you know, I, I mean, not probably, <laughs> like, you can die if you don't do right. the right things. And so I don't want to scare people, um, but it's the truth. And so I don't drink really ever anymore. It's very rare. Um, and I feel better because of it. I don't eat anything really out of packages anymore, except for my keto bars, my keto crisps. They're so good. Um, they might be bread. <laughs> yeah. Oops, sorry, friends. <laughs> that was my alarm for our, our, our chat today. Um, so I, I have made those swaps, but if you're going to have sustainable weight loss, this is how you do it. This is why their program is so successful for people because you are logging everything and you are learning you have to learn. You didn't know your organic protein shake was not great for you. Once you learn that, you now can make better choices. But when you're not aware, you can't. So it's awareness. It's it's making better decisions. It's knowing, like uh, Natasha, we were talking earlier about the why. You got to know the why. And what is your why, Anne? What is my why? Why do you want to do this other than me telling you to do it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, I was going to think this? about the fear of writing the notes and here's my fear of answering my why. Um, I think my why is to be the better version of myself. And I think um, I've always been a protector and like the funny kid and things like that. And I never thought about how I presented you know, physically, because I wasn't the hot girl, even in high school or whatever. So I didn't have that pressure. And then I turned that into, well, I don't want to try to be my best self, because what if my best self isn't as good as other people? So I think now, if I'm, you know, introspective on it, my why is why not? Like, why not me? Why can't I be that person? Um, you know, like my sister is very thin and fit and I watch her and I'm like, well, she actually eats probably a lot less than I do. And that's why she weighs a lot less and she's more active. So I think my why is, yeah. And I, I hadn't thought about that Marie, until just this moment. So maybe this is a stupid thing to say, but I think it is just, it's going to be, why not? Like, I think it's, you know, I'm double nickels now and, uh, it's it's time for me to embrace that. And um, I've been on other, like I've been um, healthier at other moments of time, you know, like fitness wise. And then all of a sudden, COVID, this is excuses though, COVID hit, I, I lost a good friend. My husband started making baguettes. That's that's not good. Tell your husband not to bake bread. He'd make all. <laughs> so then I was like, all right, well, we have to have one out of the oven and one with dinner. I mean, that's not sustainable for anybody except maybe Michael Phelps, who's burning 14 that puts in calories a day. So <laughs> I think, um, yeah, I think it's just a pause. And like when you asked me to do this um, in being an OG heel squatter, I'm like, if a door opens, I need to at least peek through and see what's on the other side of that door. So 
I'm like, Kevin and Maria, you know, are doing this for me because they love me and they see that this could make me a better version of myself. So I have nothing to lose except a part, you know, weight. And um, so, yeah, so why not now? Why not me? Cheers to a healthier you. Why not you? I love that. I love that. I, I think this is going to change your life. I'm so excited. I do too. I believe that's the first thing with Nam. I think I texted you no. after <laughs> after the, the questionnaire. Right, I'm like, way, oh my gosh, these people know me better than my parents and my family and friends. And uh, one of the thing, the thing they say is, you know, and it, I forget who the actual quote is. Whether you believe, uh, is it what you Henry believe, or yeah, if you whether you believe you can or you believe you can't, you're right. Yes. And uh, that's been on the show, too. And I don't remember who the quote is from, but I'm like, that's so true. So I think just getting in that mindset and meditating on that and putting that in like my gratitude journal. So I say I don't take notes, but I started a gratitude journal uh, earlier in the spring. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to do that every day. So I'm getting better with that. Um, and that was through this show. And so why can't the gratitude be for this app and for this community and for being better as opposed to looking at it as black? Like, who really cares? Like, once you eat it, it's the satisfaction is gone. So yeah. I think the satisfaction of being out there is going to far away any one item of food. Health is the number one thing we need. I'm yeah. so excited. I'm so excited to keep getting check-ins. Now, by the way, friends, um, this is not something Noom asked us to do. I'm doing this on my own because I know that this program is working for my other friends. I know it's going to work for Anne, and I know it could work for you. And that's why I wanted to give it the time that it needed. So it's not just the ad that you hear on the show. It really is a real conversation so that maybe this is something that you give yourself the gift of as well. And so, and we could talk to them. Maybe they'll do some giveaways for our heel squad. That would be really fun. Maybe Natasha, you can check in on that. I think that'd be great because you know, I love doing the giveaways. Uh, but yeah, I thought this would be really important to kind of share with people because you hear ads, you don't know what works. You don't know what doesn't work. I know it's worked for my one, this one friend who just texted me and two others. And now I know it's going to work for you because it's already changing your mindset. You're already seeing your, your worth the change. You're already seeing that you have things that you can make quick adjustments to. And yeah, nothing you want in life is going to be easy right? There are going to be those tough moments where your friends are all drinking the glass of wine at the table. But as somebody who's had to say no, I'll tell you, you can find your power in that no. And they will look at you like you're that unicorn. You're that special one that could say no when they couldn't. And then you'll give them power later. So that power just spreads with you. It's it's really I love cool. that. Yeah. So anyhow, Anne, love you. Thank you for being on this journey. And thank you for sharing. You did wonderfully sharing. And by the way, I love that they have a coach for you. That's so cool. Yeah, it is. Thank you. I, I love you guys. I love the show and what you're doing and happy to be here and continue this conversation further down the line. If you think that makes sense or yeah, whatever. Yeah, you keep us posted. Awesome. All right. All right. Have a great day. You too. Bye bye. It's not always easy to do right sometimes like i have to go work somewhere where there's not a lot of those options and there's not an ability to be able to cook for myself and so i'm peeling things out of sandwiches and eating like just the turkey and the lettuce and so um it's not easy but um but once you start diving into it you really have an awareness and that awareness is what's so so key there, there was and on this the heel squad uh, all stars episode i think that Natasha's talking about one of the doctors mentioned how important it is to get to know your body and, mm -hmm. and tune into your body. So, you know, what are the foods you eat that make you feel good? And I don't mean like high for a minute, mm -hmm. but actually make you, wow. I, and what are the ones that just make you sluggish, exhausted or uh, constipated or bloated or mm -hmm. um, any of those other things you're talking about and taking that time to realize that because one of the things that was on that episode was that 
um, it's everyone's makeup is different, so it's different foods for everybody. So arugula may work for you, may work yeah. for your fans, may not work for everybody. Yeah, but I try it. You were trying it. <laughs> it. Yeah, but you were trying it, and you were aware. Yeah. Right? You have an awareness now, yeah. but that happened when you became more mentally focused on what you were eating and then how you're responding and reacting to those foods. Yeah, and don't beat yourself up. Like I, after surgery, was craving coffee. I had cut coffee for months and I felt so much better. And then I got back on coffee. And then we went to Greece and there was more coffee and uh, the listen, best coffee ever. I, I will say that if you start hating on yourself for your food decisions too much, then I think that that is counterproductive. And I think you're you're actually going to see it in your body too. I agree. If you're self-loathing. And I think there are times, and this is after your surgery, Maria, I said, we are now, Maria, this is not about um, your optimal eating and health. And no, this is about getting you out of the hospital, getting Gaining you strong again, yeah. again. Yeah. And then we're going to Greece. We're going to enjoy uh, some time away, uh, well-deserved after everything we've been through. And you'll get back to it and and now you are now you're getting back to it but mm -hmm. i said right now you know and and for me i have my issues and i told you uh, i'm not going to have to i'm not going to hate on myself if i have an extra coffee or something that's not good for me but i really need it in that moment just to get me through you know so um i caution against the extremism you know so joe dispenza mentions that in the, in the interview that you did with him a little while ago is that it doesn't matter, you know, how much meditation you do or how much you do of all that stuff. If you're not eating properly and you're hating on yourself, then that doesn't work. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Well, this is fun. I'm really excited to document her journey. I'm, sorry, I'm yeah. really excited she to see, it. you know. And I also love that Anne was like the realization she came to with the why and like how important it is for her at this stage in her life. And she was like, why not? Like, why not me? And yeah. so many people can identify with that as to like, why can't I have the thing that I've been craving all my life? Mm -hmm. And so I think that that's so wonderful that she can lean into that and, and get that now. Yeah. Very cool. All right, friends. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Hope you had a great fourth. I hope you had a great post fourth. And uh, let the good times keep rolling. In the meantime, be nice people, make good choices, and be present. This podcast and all related content published or distributed by or on behalf of Maria Menunos or MariaMenunos.com is for informational purposes only and may include information that is general in nature and that is not specific to you. Any information or opinions expressed or contained herein are not intended to serve as or replace medical advice, nor to diagnose, prescribe, or treat any disease, condition, illness, or injury, and you should consult the healthcare professional of your choice regarding all matters concerning your health, including before beginning any exercise, weight loss, or healthcare program. If you have or suspect you may have a healthcare emergency, please contact a qualified healthcare professional for treatment. Any information or opinions provided by a guest expert or host featured within website or on company's podcast are their own, not those of Maria Menounos or the company. Accordingly, Maria Menounos and the company cannot be responsible for any results or consequences or actions you may take based on information or opinions.